Hey everybody, it's Paul from One Cast One Fish, and today we're going to start class number two on the Garmin Striker Fish Finder. Now, in case you've missed class number one, I'm going to leave a link down below in the description so you can check that out later. In class number two, we're going to be covering device configuration settings. Specifically, we're going to be going over system settings, my vessel settings, alarm settings, unit settings, and navigation settings. Now, if you haven't already, all I ask is that you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to use the bell notification so you get notified of the next One Cast One Fish video. Now, as a real quick tip before we get started, I just want you to know there's a lot of information in this video. And it's not going to really be pertinent to everybody that has a Garmin Striker Fish Finder. With that said, I just want you to know that this video will be broken down in the description with the start times of different subsections that may be of more interest to you. First, we'll look at the Garmin Striker System Settings. Starting from the home screen, let's scroll down and select Settings. Here we'll have the ability to adjust settings within the system, vessel specs, alarms, units, and navigation menus. Let's start by selecting system and going through the system settings menu. But before we get started, I want to point out the upper portion of the screen. You'll notice that the name of the parent menu is listed. This is extremely useful in helping you navigate through and understand where in various menus and sub-menus you are. Under the systems menu, you'll see settings that are adjustable for display, beeper, GPS, auto power, language, system information, and simulator. We'll start with the display settings. You'll see the option for adjusting your fish finder backlighting, which can be adjusted to make your screen brighter or darker based on ambient lighting conditions to help make your fish finder screen easier to see. I also have a video dedicated to adjusting the screen backlighting, which I'll provide a link to in the video description. You can also change the screen color mode between daylight and night, and that also helps make the screen easier to see based on time of day. Or you can leave the color mode in auto, and your fish finder will automatically switch between daylight and night mode based on the current time. The daylight mode displays the screen with brighter white backgrounds to help make the screen easier to see and read during bright daylight conditions, while the night mode displays the screen with darker black and blue backgrounds to help make the screen easier to see and read during dark night conditions. Beeper settings are pretty simple. This is where you can decide whether you want your unit to beep. You can choose between having your unit make a beep notification whenever you select an item or an alarm is triggered or you can have the unit beep only when an alarm is triggered or turn off all beeps for a silent operation. I personally feel that setting the beeper to alarm only is the best setting since it alerts you to important information without being excessive by beeping every time you press a key or make a selection. Turning the auto power to on will turn on the device automatically whenever power is applied. I personally don't use this feature and keep it off since I like to have control of when the unit powers on and powers off. Our next setting is language. Here you can set the preferred language for the text on your Garmin Fish Finder. Scrolling down and selecting system information, we'll see that we have a new set of menus for the event log, Garmin device, software information, and factory settings. The event log will show you a list of system events such as alarms and notifications. This can be extremely useful when troubleshooting issues or looking back into past historical events such as traveling to a waypoint or arriving at a waypoint destination. Under Garmin devices you'll see the device type, which in our case is a Garmin Striker 4, your current software version, and the unit ID. Software information will show you relevant information with regard to your specific Striker unit software and version history. Scrolling to and selecting factory settings will allow you to return your Garmin Striker Fish Finder back to factory default settings. You can learn more about setting your Garmin Striker Fish Finder back to factory default settings with a more in-depth video that I'll also leave a link to in the description. A word of caution though, restoring your Fish Finder to factory settings will erase all of your current saved data and waypoints. Next under the system menu is Simulator. This is one of my favorite options for learning your fish finder. No one likes to make a lot of adjustments and learning how to operate their fish finder while on the water, taking up precious fishing time. That's where the simulator comes into play. 
When selected to on, a continuous simulation of sonar return and images will play on the sonar screen within your sonar view. This is a great environment to learn how to navigate menus and try different color palettes and options within the settings to really dial in what suits your need. The best part is, all you need is a power source for your fish finder and you can learn and adjust all of your settings from the comfort of your own home. The simulation mode also gives options through the setup feature to determine pertinent information like vessel speed for use in GPS simulations such as setting tracks and waypoints which we'll be covering in a later class. I'll also be covering more in depth on the simulator mode in later classes. Now we're going to move along to adjustable vessel settings. Moving on to my vessel under the settings menu we see two options. One for keel offset and one for temperature offset. The keel offset offsets the surface reading from the transducer for the depth of a keel making it possible to measure the depth from the bottom of the keel instead of from the transducer's mounting location. This can be especially useful for boats with keels and to offset the water depth for a boat that has a deep draft. The temperature offset allows you to use a known good water temperature reading, usually obtained with a calibrated temperature probe or meter, and adjust the Garmin Striker water temperature output to match the known accurate water temperature to make up for any inaccuracies from the transducer's temperature recording. Using this technique, you can get pinpoint water temp accuracies out of the Garmin Striker fish finder. Now we're going to look at alarm settings. Next, under the settings menu, let's select alarms. This is where we can set our various alarms and notifications for the Garmin Striker units. We can customize our alarms and notifications for navigation, system, which is kind of like a general alarm, and sonar. We'll start by selecting navigation, where we'll see options to set alarms and notifications for arrival and navigation to points, along with anchor drag and an off course alarm. First, we'll start with how to set our arrival alarms. We can determine the type, activation, or what causes the alarm, and the parameter for each alarm. Under alarm type, we can select off, which would be no alarms, destination, only alarms when you arrive at a waypoint, or destination and turns, which will give you an alarm notification for each turn of your track and upon arrival. Once we determine the type of alarms we want, we'll select activation. Here we'll choose to be notified either by distance or time. If you select distance, you'll have the option to input a distance parameter that you would like to be notified prior to your arrival or turn. When setting your alarm parameter to time, you can then set a desired amount of time prior to your arrival or turn that you'd like to be notified. The anchor drag alarm is a drift alarm. You want to turn this feature on whenever you're anchored and want to know if your anchor is holding you in place or if you want to be notified if you've drifted off away from your current location. When turned on, you'll be able to enter a distance parameter. If your vessel moves from that position by the inputted distance, you'll receive an alarm to let you know that your anchor is not holding you in place or you've drifted from your current location set point. The off course alarm, when turned on, will notify you that you have veered off of the set track or course heading. When you turn the off course alarm on, you can enter a distance parameter. This is where you'll be setting how far off course you want to allow your vessel to veer before receiving an alarm notification. Moving right along to our system alarms, we have the options to set alarms for alarm clock, device voltage, and GPS accuracy. The alarm clock is literally an alarm clock. You can set the desired time, just like an alarm, and your fish finder will act as an alarm clock and notify you at that time. The device voltage is an important alarm, and I recommend turning it on. You definitely want to know if your battery voltage has dropped to an unsafe level. Using this chart, we can see that in general, a lead acid battery will be fully charged above 12.7 volts, and it's pretty much dead below 11.3 volts. I personally have my alarm set for 12 volts on all my fish finders. Though this will sometimes give false alarms when cranking a big motor over, it'll easily clear after the motor is started. However, if my battery voltage drops below 12 volts and it's not under a heavy load like starting a motor, I want to know that I may have an issue or that my batteries have drained to a point where I need to return and recharge them. Under GPS accuracy, you have the option to set an alarm for the GPS accuracy. When you turn your GPS accuracy alarm to on, you can select a GPS accuracy limit 
And if your GPS accuracy falls below that limit, you will receive an alarm. So if you set your GPS accuracy alarm for 25 feet, any time the GPS accuracy is not within 25 feet, your fish finder will give you an alarm. Our final alarm menu will be our sonar alarms. This is where we'll be able to set alarms for shallow water, deep water, water temperature, and fish alarms. These alarms are going to be a personal preference for each angler, vessel, and the conditions that you fish. The shallow water alarm can be set to on, and you'll be given the option to set a desired alarm depth. If the depth goes below that set point, then your alarm will sound. The deep water alarm can be set to on, and you'll be given the option to set the desired alarm depth. If the water depth exceeds your set point, then an alarm will sound. The water temperature alarm, if set to on, will give you the option to set a desired alarm temperature. If the water temperature goes above or below that set point by 2 degrees, then an alarm will sound. The fish alarm can be set to sound an alarm whenever a fish may be present. I say maybe because even though the Garmin Striker does a rather good job of identifying fish, it still will make mistakes and give false alarms or miss actual fish sometimes. That's why it's always best to learn to read and interpret your sonar returns as this will be the most accurate way of identifying fish and structures. Now for me, I have all these alarms turned off. And because I'm using my kayak and I fish a lot of shallow water, the shallow water alarm is just going to be a nuisance for me. I'm also not worried about the deep water or water temperature alarms because I can see all that information in real time on my sonar screen. Now I just want to say these are my settings based on my own personal experience and how I use my vessel and fish finder. Now based on your experience and what you use your fish finder for or your vessel, your needs may be totally different than what I use mine for. So in that case, be sure to use whatever works best for you. Now we'll take a look at adjustable unit settings. The next settings we'll look at under the settings menu are the unit settings. Within the unit settings there's many that you can and should adjust to your preference. However, there are some that we should just leave alone. Unless we have a specific reason to adjust them as improper adjustment or changes can result in inaccuracies while navigating with the GPS. First we'll look at the system units. This is where you can adjust the way the unit displays, units of measure, you can change between statute, metric, nautical, or you can even customize the units to your liking. I also have a more in-depth video on changing your units of measure that I'll link to in the description below. Under variance settings, you can set the magnetic declination, which is the angle between magnetic north and true north for your present location. My recommendation is to leave this in auto unless you have a very firm understanding of mapping. Next, you can set your preference for north reference between true, grid, or magnetic north. This sets the direction references used in calculating heading information. Setting to true north sets the geographical north as the north reference. Setting to grid sets grid north as the north reference, or 000 degrees. Magnetic north sets the magnetic north as the north reference point. I find that leaving the setting to magnetic north has served me just fine for my needs. And I recommend that you do the same unless you have a very good understanding of mapping. The position format setting will allow you to change the way headings and position information is displayed on the fish finder. Do not change this setting unless you are using a map or chart that specifies a different position format. The map datum sets the coordinate system on which the map is structured. Again, this is a setting that you do not want to change unless using a map or chart that specifically specifies a different map datum. Under time format you can decide if you want your time displayed as a 24 hour or 12 hour clock format. For example, 2 in the afternoon can display it as 2 p.m. or 1400. Adjusting the time zone will allow you to adjust the unit for a specific time zone you'll be operating in. The daylight savings selection can be set to auto to allow the unit to adjust for daylight savings time automatically. Next up will be our navigational settings. Next under settings we'll look at navigation where we have the options for setting our route labels, turn transition activation, turn transition time or distance based on your activation selection, and route starting point. We'll start by selecting route labels. This is where you can determine how you would like your routes to appear either by name or number. I personally prefer naming all my routes and waypoints so they're easier to identify later. 
Next, we'll set the turn transition by time or distance. Under turn transition activation, you can choose whether to use distance or time to begin transitioning to turns on your routes. When distance is selected for turn transition activation, you'll be able to set how far before the turn that you transition to it as the next leg. If you set your turn transition activation to time, you'll be able to set how many minutes or seconds before the turn that you transition to it as the next leg of your route. Now to help make this a bit more understandable, we'll look at an example of a route with turn transition activated. As we start our route and approach the first turn on the route, we'll get a notification since we have our arrival turn alarm activated from earlier in this video. Now as we start to transition to the next leg of our route, you'll see that we have a yellow line and arrow. This is your turn transition. And moving further along here on another leg of the route, you can see that instead of an abrupt turn, we have a nice slow transition into the turn along our route, indicated by the yellow arrow and line. The next setting you can adjust is how you would like to start your routes. You can choose either to start your routes from where the boat's current position is, or you can start a route from a specified waypoint. Wow, that was a lot of info in this video. I really hope, though, that it gave you a better insight into the system configuration settings that are available on your Garmin Striker Fish Finder. Now, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section below. And be sure to like and share with all of your friends. And we'll see you next time on the water.